Ladies and gentlemen, Robbie Robertson. I first crossed paths with Eric in 1968, when we were very young. And I was immediately struck by how gracious and supportive and complimentary he was. Then a while after that, Eric came up to Woodstock, New York, where the band and I were living at the time. And he's said this before, but when he was coming up there, in his mind, he was coming there to join the band. Now, I was the guitar player in the band. <laughs> he's the guitar player. Was he coming there to take my job? Was he coming there to share my job? And I said, this is a very unusual compliment, but it was from the heart. I want to send respect out to the man who survived one of the deepest tragedies a father could imagine. I want to send respect out to the man who found the courage to stand up to the demons of addiction. I want to send respect out to the man with a voice that can sing you to tears. I want to send respect out to the only person to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame three times. An English kid playing the blues. I mean, it's just wrong. Doesn't fit. That's probably why, you know, it's unpopular in some respects. <laughs> By the time Eric Clapton released his first solo album in 1970, he was already one of the most celebrated guitarists in rock. Clapton was born in Ripley, England in 1945. By age 18, he'd established himself in the burgeoning English blues scene as guitarist for the Yardbirds. Soon Clapton was rewriting rock history in John Mayall's Blues Breakers, Cream, and Blind Faith. But for Clapton, the 60s were just a warm-up. His solo work underscored an additional strength, the power of his impassioned voice. In his recordings throughout the 70s, Clapton used his music to make sense of personal anguish and addiction with the honesty he learned from the blues. Clapton never stopped searching for new inspiration. From reggae to country to R&B, his loyalty was not to a single style, but to emotional integrity. It's why Clapton has found new audiences in his every incarnation for close to four decades. In 1999, having faced drug addiction and alcoholism, Clapton used his experience to continue to influence new generations. He auctioned his collection of over 100 guitars to fund the Crossroads Recovery Center in Antigua. Eric Clapton has never stopped moving forward. Along his journey, he pointed out the roads that other musicians follow. It is my honor, my pride, my joy to induct Eric Clapton into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> 